so almost 13 same litter one's been raised one way which is here and one's been raised in a home with two busy little kids uh, last weekend when he first came here he was at the kids were scared of him because he's been loose to chase the kids and play no play with the kids instead of teaching him to be confined they shut him in a room and I said don't you have woodwork in the room well yeah what do you think he's gonna do with it he hasn't even hit his teething stage yet now it's very tough because John doesn't see the puppy every day. So normally it would be Tessie who is sitting here calmly being the stellar performer and well-mannered puppy. John came in, fluffed her all up, and he's sitting here smiling at her. So she's having a very hard time now because of that. Now, this puppy was the one that was started correctly. But last weekend when they came to pick Clark up after being boarded for the weekend, they began tying him. So instead of having the mark difference where Tessie is the stellar performer, we have Clark, because he's lived with two kids running around the house, busy people. This has become his new normal. That's how quick it changes. That's how easy. The good girl, Tessie. There. That's the Tessie we know and love. Now, in raising a kid-friendly dog, would this be what you would want if you were sitting here reading a book, working at the computer? Pretty much. Would this be what you would want if you were riding in the car? Going to a meeting? Traveling? Yeah. Would this be what you would want if you had guests? You're having a big party at your home, lots of people in, a big dinner party? Pretty much. So even though, even though, yeah, she's happy to see John. That's okay. That's okay. She should be. What we're going for is she recovers. What? Oh, it's okay. Okay, now that's the point. Now I have, the last thing I'm going to do is keep going back because what we do is teach the puppy to do something bad to get us to come when they're called, when we're called. We're not going to start that. Now I will, if, he, if she continues to be really obnoxious, what will I do, Kathy? Take the rug away. I am not going to sit and argue with her. I'm not going to go back and correct her and correct her and correct her. That just controls my behavior. The only one we can control is us. So therefore, I'm going to set her up where she's safe. I'm going to give her what she needs. And if she chooses to do it wrong, oh well. She's chosen the consequences. Consequences are those things that determine whether we do it again or not. Not a problem. Now, we have been developing, and I've done it for years, I call it kid-friendly dogs, and never had quite a definition for it before. The fact that So many people, or everybody, has their own perception of what training is. They go to 
training classes. Do anybody who has been to a number of training classes, every class is different, that training class is determined by the instructor. I can train my dog to attack people. I can train my dog to hunt. I can train my dog to do obedience. I can train my dog to do anything I want it to do. So what's the definition of training? Communicating clearly enough that the dog does what you want it to do rather than what it wants to do itself. That does not include prevention or any of the other things. That includes communication. Now, training, people can rationalize that they're training because they can hold the dog in place with a treat in front of its face and call that training. Your dog is not trained, you are. So in those classes where the dog is working because of what you do, those become people training. I mean, they're training the people what they have to do to get the dog to do something. That's not my goal. So I decided to change the name. Training is anything you want it to be. But there are very few people who can end up with a kid-friendly dog. I don't have any kids. What do I need a kid-friendly dog for? It's not training them for kids. It's training them for the oldest, youngest, weakest, most limited member of your family or anyone you have that lead to. So if that dog will behave for a child, a very young child, it'll behave for anything up the food chain. If you can teach a dog to come into a pack, which is your family or your home or wherever you take the dog, in here, by the way, this pack is huge. But that's what a pack is. It's a family. It's where you go to rest at night so you're safe. You go off, do your hunting, you go off, do all your other things, and you come back to the pack because it's safe. It's not all about, I am the leader. It's about having others you can depend on, and you're in a rank. So too many homes, too many training classes, I should say, you sign your dog up, you take your dog in, and it's one handler. Okay? So, I can handle that dog, but what about little Mary Sue? What about Grandma? What about Grandpa? What about someone who's ill? What about you if you break your leg? A kid-friendly dog is appropriate for kids, the youngest kid. That means a baby. That dog is never to put its feet on that baby, never to treat that baby rudely, never knock that child down. By praising when they go outside. She peed yeah. on the floor last week. You said, good girl. Uh -huh. And so I... Well, I'm curious. And, and this that. is a good question. Uh, when these puppies came, the people, the breeders that had them, the breeder that had them, was trying to do the families a real favor by starting the housebreaking before the puppies went home. Now, that's a really good thing for a breeder to do. But after you've had the puppies six, eight months, and you're going to go on vacation, and the dog goes to a boarding kennel, and it's waiting for someone to take it for a walk. It will end up with a urinary tract infection because it's trying to hold it until somebody takes it out to grass. Legally, to board dogs, you have to have them on cement. 
So when Tesla came, I put her in that pen, and I, you know, poor John, we don't get her out for three days. Oh my gosh, because she has got to successfully potty on cement. Now, I will bet, now I've never been to your house, but I will bet your house is not cement. This has nothing to do with housebreaking. This has to do with peeing on cement. Okay? Yeah. Now, if you go home and you put the puppy in that pen, in a basement, you know, a pen in a basement, even in the garage if it's cool weather, all right, and that puppy's in there, you never have to get up in the middle of the night. You never have to hurry home from work. You never have to get that puppy out when it cries. What the puppy learns is to sleep through the night, entertain itself, and leave you alone. Otherwise, you become a slave to the puppy. Now, the, woman, the people that own that, the very nice people, she's got two little kids, and she's pregnant. When this puppy squeaks, she's trying to get it outside. So all the puppy is doing is competing with the kids for her attention. She's running herself ragged. By putting that puppy in that pen or tying it here with a paper, we never have to worry about it. By the time this puppy goes home, about another month, a little over a month, this puppy will sleep absolutely through the night. She will not potty in a crate because she goes in a crate and then she comes out to potty. So your first goal should not be that the puppy never potties inside. A boarding kennel is inside. Your goal is that it's clean in a crate. That's it. So if the crate is open, that's what the den would be like if they were wolves. Your go-to default mode is always, what would it make sense to a dog or a wolf? Not what makes sense to you. What makes sense to a puppy is they're born in a den and they come out. I have the three-week-old puppies up there. They have a big swimming pool. There's a bed and there's papers. Those puppies at three weeks old are already waddling over to the paper to potty on. Because the bed is kept clean, the papers have scent. At three weeks old, those puppies are already leaving their bed to potty off on the papers. They are clean as they can possibly be. But too many people keep all the papers clean and everything else. The puppy has no scent to go to. It's pretty amazing. Anyway. That answer your question? Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I've talked, we've, you know, there's been stuff going on. When you came in, there was a lot of activity. And these puppies are laying there doing nothing. Now, you notice Tesla's not chewing on the rug anymore. Had I kept going over there, aggravating her, she would have kept on doing it even more because I want her to entertain herself. So we have to pick our battles. Now, there's no substitute for kids. Let's see here. Oh, we have some. Hi. Now, what do kids like to do? Play. Play. Go play. Easy. What should a kid-friendly dog do when the kids are playing? What? Why don't you get, Rana? Why don't you go back over that way and roll that ball? You see, good boy. Sure. Not hard. It's more important that the puppy learns not to play than that the puppy plays. Okay, run around. Run. Easy, Bridget. Now put the ball down and run. Hey, girls, get over here quick. Hurry up. Good dogs. Now, what does Tessie want?
to do. <laughs> this is prey. These dogs are born with certain drives, herding, prey drives, which are the same drives, by the way, just different results. They want to play, chase, kill. Those puppies in there already, don't even have teeth yet, are grabbing hold of toys and bones and growling at each other, I mean, puppy growl, for inconveniencing them. So, you're going to walk over there, you know, kind of right through where the puppy is. Go ahead, Riley. As the pack leaders, or hierarchy of the puppies, these two girls have the right to take up space, and the puppies have no right to challenge those higher in rank. Now in a wolf pack, there are no equals. You are either above or below. You are not playmates. In any business, club, school, family, there is a hierarchy. If you as a parent, okay, you're not nice kids. Okay. No, I mean, all right. Now, you kids have to behave. Now, now don't do, now, honey, you mustn't, now, honey, you mustn't do that. Now, honey, you, you mustn't do, now, now, you need to stop that right now. Your place. <laughs> I allowed it to drop, didn't I? Because I outweighed both of them. So if I can't step up, knock it off. Now, that ended it. A little growl. Right? Sit. Good. <laughs> I did been better. <laughs> okay, come on. Now, when we have that level of respect, we are able then to have some fun with the dogs or the kids. Okay, that's crazy. Okay, stop. Okay, act crazy. Easy, easy. Oh, that's the dimmer switch, the on switch, and the off switch. If we don't have those three switches in installed, we got a problem. This is to be easy. So now, if we have two puppies here, and this is going, all right, both of you, knock it off. Good. So now, go over there and sit by Clark. I'm going to bite you, so be prepared. Go ahead. Go sit by Clark. Now, Clark's a nice puppy. Now, they're smart enough not to sit close. Look at that. Because Clark will... Okay, go closer. Now, if I allow that puppy to challenge them, move closer. Look at them. <laughs> Please, no. Clark, enough. Enough. Hey, easy. If I don't step in enough, that's enough. Okay, you cut it. Easy. Good, easy. Nice. There we go. Okay, run away. If I won't allow one kid to pick on the other, but I allow the puppy to go after them, I'm putting the puppy above the kids. Not going to happen. Now, come over and sit by Tesla. Easy. Now, be calm. Yeah, there you go. She is a puppy. Now, get right in there. Now, slow down. Easy. Okay. 
Grab her neck. Easy. There you go. Now, if you wouldn't allow a child to do what the puppy's doing, then stop it. Good, easy, Tessie. Give it that. She likes it. I gotta get a room. Sure. That is what is a taut thing. What's that? That Raina did. Her face. How she did this dog. You taught the I did kid teach. how to do it. The dog also knows where right. it was teaching the person. Of course. Of course. The other thing that many people teach is about ten times of somebody sticking their fist in my nose, I would bite them myself. I do that, you know, people um, treat dogs. They're going to give them a treat. And they do this stuff all the time. And dogs bite them, and they don't understand why. Well, they not only do that. First of all, if I wouldn't let my kid take a treat from a stranger, I'm not going to let my dog either. I don't want my dog eating from a stranger. There are not. There is a lot of untrustworthy strangers. Would you stop them? Yes. How would you do that? I would say, just wait. Now I'm teaching this puppy manners. I wouldn't let my kid take a treat from a stranger, and you're I'm, I, that's you're not a habit them. I love. Okay, that's so cool. that's teaching I the teach them because just to say no or be ugly or say something nasty that doesn't that just makes you look horny. It, it does. Takes a Correct. 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 But I will stop and I will step in front of the puppy if I have to. Yes. I've had times, occasions, where veterans come up and want to feed right. Katie. Right. And I let them know, this is my service dog. Right. And we're not going to break training. Right. She cannot be fit. Right. And, and they, then they back off and apologize. Yeah. And, and Mark, you are absolutely up. right that it's good to use that vest yeah. as yeah. a way, if you don't want to sit and explain right. it to them. It's not for her. No, I understand it's that. But now look at this. Okay, what I teach them is how to do it. You do that to an adult, and they are really alive. And plus, when it comes down lower, right. coming down right. to that level. The other thing that people teach kids is to come below the kid, below the dog. They go down to the ground. No way. You have to be able to get away. If that dog is standing over that child, looking into their face, that's the kid bowing down. Everybody here has to realize that they are teaching anybody I, I, well, that's that comes up to their dog. Right. Just like Raina was taught how to handle the situation, we need to know how to handle our dog. Right. And right. Our child well, that's what we're doing. Dog. So the rules are the same for the children as they are for the dog. Now, if this was a school, Okay, now your hands to yourself. You're all just sitting there. Back up a little bit. We sit far enough away. Now, everybody needs to do the same things. If it's good enough for those kids, it's good enough for that dog. So now, okay, girls, up. Okay, come on over here. All right, I'm going to kind of face up here so the camera can see. All right, Riley. How would you like it if I came up like this so you could sniff my hand? You wouldn't like it? Really? Okay, how would you like it if I came up to you and kind of did this? And I'd kinda bite did... you. You'd bite me? Yeah. You nasty dog. And it's intimidating to the dog too. Whoa! Uh, this is, we have three children here within this one. Um, we have Raina, who's the nice, polite, cute little girl. We have Reina the Trainer, which just emerged, and we have BB Golini. Give us a taste of her. Yeah, that would be Reina. That would be BB. Okay, BB, enough of that. You're back to Reina now. All right. So if we take that away, so if if uh, Riley has her puppy here, 
Or no? Okay. All right, Riley. You be my puppy. Come here. All right, my puppy's here on a leash. Right on. Now, just a minute. Now, how would you like it if I did that? You wouldn't like that, would you? Wouldn't you rather? Okay, come on here. Okay. Wouldn't you rather have me do this? Oh. Why don't you do that to my puppy? Give me easy, puppy. Good, easy, puppy. And in that way, I can tighten the lead. So even if she's growling, Raina's safe. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Yes, you are. You're whoever I say you are. Okay, back to your rug. So if you don't feel like teaching, the best is the perfect way. If you do feel like teaching, you take away what they want to do, replace it with something better. That's truly what it is.